Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of Do It Yourself where I build an MMO because I am clearly an idiot. Last time I had the sniffles so I wasn't too with it. Hopefully I will do better this time. First we're going to be looking at what that's wrong. At what I did between episodes which is to be fair quite a bit. But I wanted to kind of speed things up because I kind of want to start getting on with the whole making the game thing, at least sort of, kind of. So I wrote this down and we're just going to go through it. So I added various network data type converters, which you can see here, you byte double float int, um, signed byte short, unsigned in and unsigned short, and binary data, which is a thing. Um, let's just close all of this. So this is net binary data, it's basically the same as the other things. Oh my god, this font is so big. Um, now you can see that it has an is variable length property and it returns true. All the other ones return false because we know how big they are. So what it does when it, I've decided that variable length data just prefixes their data with an integer that describes their length. So it writes the buffer, first it writes an integer about the length, and then if it reads from the buffer, first it reads an integer, and then it takes the, the, the data. So that, we needed that for the login. So that's fine. Um, iNetwork data, okay, let's go to iNetwork data. No longer takes an offset when it reads from buffer. I also added the is variable length thing, which I already showed you. Yeah, no longer takes an offset because then I can just do this instead of keeping track of the offset in every freaking message, which I don't want to do. The network message can now read variable length network data by checking is variable length. Variable length data is prefixed by an integer containing the length of the data. So let's briefly show you that. So we didn't really have to do much. This was a little bit different. It used to be only like get the data length. Now it just checks if, if it's a variable length data and then it reads the length and otherwise it just uses the, the length that the data says it is. So that's not a big deal. I added a CL login opcode and class. So the CL login message is basically the message that contains um, the, the token, the login token. So you have your ID, your um, ticks, which is the time or the date, and then your hash. And it reads the same, and then it has a verify function, and it does everything that we told it to do before, so it checks the date, it checks the signatures, then it checks if the hashes match, and it returns whether, the ha whether it's a valid login or not. So that's good. Game client times of connecting clients that send no data. This is just the security measure, which is kind of important. Where are you, game client? I cannot... Oh, there you are. Okay. When a game client is born into this world, it makes a timer. A timer is just a C-sharp thing. Um, eventually... Oh wait, this is a server, so I don't need to change it up. Yeah, C-sharp thing is just, you know, it's a timer, you set it to a time, and then it calls a, calls a function when it elapses. So it starts the timer. If you haven't logged in by then, it times you out and it closes the connection. This is so people can't crash the server by, or, you know, tie up the server by logging in and then just sending nothing. I probably, I have a 30 second timeout, that's probably way too long, but that's fine. Um, the game client disconnects clients that send non-binary messages while log logging in. So in on message, we used to have the whole login sequence, we move that to its own function where it checks if it's a binary message, it tries to make a login message out of that if it can't because it's the wrong type of message or whatever. That'll throw an error and come here. And this is actually wrong, I just noticed. If it throws an error, we want to close. And we don't need to return. So if it throws an error because it's the wrong kind of message, it closes the connection. It closes the connection if it can't verify the login. If the client sends any other type of connection, it also closes the connection. This is, again, so clients can't send a bunch of trash data 
during the login process and mess up the server. Security guys, you have to you have to think about these things. Okay, tiles class. We created a tiles class. That's just um so we have tiles. You can kind of see it there, but it doesn't matter. It's just a row of tiles, it's like sixty every tile is thirty-two wide and sixty-four high. Let's see, this is a tiles class. So it just this is just a placeholder. It takes um a texture and then creates a bunch of these tile info ones which have a subregion of the texture, the index of the tile and the offset at which to draw the tile which is the same for all tiles because this is a very rudimentary system. And then you can just index tiles class to get a certain tile. So you can type, you know, Tile zero. This is the zero tile, and then you can be like dot texture or dot offset or dot index. So that's cool. You also create an isometric camera. I'm not gonna explain this. <laughs> it just, just it transforms a world position into a screen position. That is to a two by one diametric isometric orthographic perspective. Just, just don't think about it too hard. It also um source things by a certain depth in the world, so I don't have to manually decide the draw order, I can just fire off a bunch of sprites and they will order themselves because they have a correct depth that will sort the entire scene, which is convenient and performant and important. Uh, creating an engine class. This is the engine class, it has the tiles and the camera, so you can access them from anywhere. Created the iRenderable interface. And an iRenderable is anything that you can render. It's a big shock. So, like the tile, which is an iRenderable, it has a texture and it has an offset. And then I created a scene batch. Like, I know I'm going through this pretty fast, but this is all rather rudimentary stuff. It's not really important all very engaging, which is why I did all of it off camera. Okay, the scene batch is just a certain sprite batch. A sprite batch is just the thing that draws sprites. The scene batch is thing is a thing that takes an eye renderable and then draws it on the screen using the camera in its appropriate position. That's all it does. It's not very complicated. And then I created a test scene. So let's put this away. I I put this in the change log so it's fine. Uh, let's fire up the client and see what it does. Ta-da! It's amazing! So yeah, it just... Uh, this is just a test. You can see that the feet go behind the tile, even though it's supposed to be on top. This is because sorting stuff on a per sprite basis is basically impossible to do completely correctly. You can do tricks. What we're going to be doing is we're going to use um, a, a height map with the sprites at some point using a custom pixel shader to fix it so this is all accurate. For now this will just have to do. It's unfortunate but that is that. And you can use WASD to move the camera around. And that's where we are. So hopefully that didn't actually take 10 minutes but I think it did. Hopefully I can cut that down a bit. Apparently I did quite a bit of camera. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry at all. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is this. Shall we also put this? No, we're not going to make this always on top. So this is the login process. The client logs in, sends a CL login message, and the server gets the character data from the database, and the server sends the map data to the, to the client, um, then it sends the character data, and then it sends the location. And this is all stuff that we haven't done yet. And we have some notes here. So for step two, where it gets the character data, we don't have a database server set up. So we're just going to do another dummy interface. For step three, the map format, we're going to do this. We're going to have an integer that tells the client which version of map it is. This might not be necessary, but if you if you don't know if a file format is going to change, it's always a good idea just just put a version number in there so you can just change the code to work with all different versions. Um, 
and then it has a 16-bit integer containing the width, another one containing the height, and then we have width times height bytes that have the height of a tile. Then the server sends a character sends the character data that's just the blank message because we don't have any. And then for the location, we use the dummy interface that returns character data that has a location. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So the client login, we've already had that. Actually, let's change this. Let's be like bool login. Now we need to return false here because we didn't log in properly. Return true here and return false there. So anywhere that isn't logged in, although we do have a logged in ball, but it doesn't matter. If login message, so we want this to start doing what we've written down here. So we want to get the character data from a database. We don't know yet how that's going to work. Presumably, we can just do a callback. So let's, let's just do that. So we're going to make a new interface. I character db sure. And we want the server to get the character data, so we need to make a character data thing. Add new item class, character data. Yeah, let me just type up this stuff because this is not interesting for you to watch. And then I will bring you back once I've done that. So I've implemented all that stuff uh, with a little bit more than I wanted to do on screen. So we have the character database interface, which has a get character data function, which takes an ID and a handler, this handler, to call when it has your character data. Now, um, character data is just a class with the ID and a location, so that's not very interesting. And then I created a public, uh, up created a static server class that has the character database. This one creates a dummy character database. The dummy character database is this, which when you call this function just calls the received handler with character data containing the ID that you supplied it and a point. I don't know why I'm duplicating this data. I probably shouldn't, but it doesn't matter. I don't think. So this should work, I think. So what happens is, if you log in successfully, it starts the process of getting the character data, and that's it. Now, this is where we wind up. So we have the data, and we have the location. And it doesn't have like a map or anything, so the next step is to send a map. And then first, we need a map class. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make the map class now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm experimenting with doing a lot of cuts, so expect me to do a lot of stuff off, off screen so you don't sit there bored out of your mind watching me type stuff. Okay, so I'll, I'll do that and then I'll bring you back and explain how it works. So I've created the map class here. Um, you can see it has a width and a height and then it has a, a double point heights array that has every tile in it. Now if you want to know how, how high a tile is, you can check it here. It just returns the height so you can index this with an x and a y coordinate instead of just a single index. Then we convert it to binary, we create the data, we set the endian to network endian, write the version, write the width and the height. Then we store the current data location and then we write all the heights. Now because the height, a tile, a, 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 a map tile, like a terrain tile, can either be at a whole unit of height or half a unit. So what we're going to do is we, we um, multiply the height by 2 
and then turn that into a bite so we can go 128 tiles high using this. And then if something is 128 tiles high, it'll be, well actually 127 tiles high, it'll be 254 inside the binary. So the client is just going to divide it by 2 again to get the actual height. And then we return the data. And then we're back here. So now we have the map data, we want to send the map data. That is going to require a message. Let's make a message. I'm doing it in the wrong thing. I am not smart. Okay, se map message. Now again, this is not that interesting, so I'll just type this up and then I'll bring you back to see what we've done. So this is the se map message. It takes a binary map data, turns it into a message, and either it... Oh, this is gonna be an issue because it's like binary data and binary data. So that's interesting. I don't immediately know how to fix that. Hmm. Yep. Okay, for the moment I've just jury rigged it to take net binary data for the in outgoing message and binary data for the incoming message. Don't do this at home, kids, it's not a good idea. So it adds the data, blah 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 blah. It's all good. So what we want to do now is go to... We want to go to... The game client. That's what we want to do. Okay. So we want to make map message is new se map message new net binary data map dot chat net map dot to binary. So we turn the map into binary. We wrap that in a like net binary data thing and use that to create the message that we send to the client. So now we can send. A thing, I think. How do, how do I send? Send? Yep, just send. Okay, that's fine. So, we want to send the map message. Now we have sent... We don't have sent the mes map message. How did I do this? So... Websocket message dot binary message Map message dot to binary. So we're sending. Oh my god, why are you. Why are you so awful? Why are you so mean? Oh. There. Are you happy now? My god, I really need to fix that. In fact, let me just fix that. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so now we can just do send map message. And that is so much better. Oh, such a relief. Okay, so we have sent the map data. Now we want to send the character data, which is going to be pretty much like this. And again, that's going to involve a lot of typing. That isn't very interesting. So I'll take you out now and bring you back when I've done that. I've added um, the character opcode. I also created the location uh, message while I was at it. So the character message is just, it's empty. It's an empty message, just like we decided. And the location message, I didn't change the opcode. That's why I'm an idiot just has a point, the position, I created a point data which just writes the x and the y value and reads the x and the y value and stores it in a point. So that's the position. Yay! Let's close all this then, cause it's confusing me. Um, we've sent the map data, we want to send the character and the location data, so... Send new se character message 
Yeah, we just want to send a blank one. And then send new as e location message. I don't know why autocomplete is not working. It's very annoying. Data dot location. So in theory, this should work. Of course, this is just sending data. The client doesn't um, do anything with it yet. Does the client even have an on message thing? It does have an on message thing. Okay. This is actually totally not what we want. So what we want to do is let's just let's just get get rid of this. That's uh, not useful. So I d also need to check the type, and we only care about binary data. So. Theoretically, I should either I should probably disconnect the client if it starts getting non-binary data because something has gone wrong. So let's just put a to-do node in there because it's not very vital here to do DC on non-binary data. Okay. Now we want to figure out what message we're getting, which I don't have code for. I now realise. <laughs> But that's fine. We can we can work with that. Um. So what we're getting is we have a have a message, and we have message dot data. That's not accurate at all. That's not what I want. Why is this an object? Why did I not? Why why is this an object? That makes no sense. Why is this? Okay. Um. I sound very confused. And that's because I am. So I will try and investigate this. Okay, I understand now why this is. I even added a thing now. So data. Oh, that's weird. Oh, well, whatever. If type is binary, it's just going to be binary data. So data is binary data. This is a cast for those of you who don't know. It says this thing what, that we don't know the type of, that is the type of this. And if it's not the type of this, then everything blows up horribly. Just so you know. So we have the data, and now we want the network message to tell us the opcode. Op does this have a static section? It does not have a static section. Then we're going to put a static section down here. Opcode. Get opcode. Binary data data. Data.read int 32 0 network ending. There we go. So now we can do get the opcode by doing network message dot get opcode data. Now we can make a big ass switch statement which goes through all the cases. So the first case that we're gonna get is the map <sighs> typos i need to quit my fingernails do you know that if you have very long fingernails it makes typing inconvenient then we have the character data and then we have the location data i am trying to power through this so we can actually display the map and the thing on the thing today because i would really like it let's just Let's just do on map and then data. Um, new SE map message. And then this is on character new SE. What? But it's right there. Why are you gotta why are you gotta play play me like this? Okay, there we go. New ASCII character message data on location filming on location data. I'll just do a quick cut here to make these functions. Okay, I've created the three things that you that get called by the client. If it gets a map, we have message dot map. Yeah, okay. 
So what we want to do is that their map is actually I'm going to just set a map. No, I don't I don't want that. Is new map. We don't have a map. Actually we want it probably to be like map from binary message dot map. But we don't have this yet, so I have to make this. I implement map class. Um, while I was doing that, I also um, set the position. But I realised that the camera position is a 3D position. It's not a 2D position. So I changed um, the location to be a 3D vector. I also changed the message to be a 3D vector, and everything should be good. Then the map, map class. I keep saying map. It's basically the same thing. It has the same heights, it has the same access here. It's just how it gets created. So you call map dot from binary and that sets the data so it has the right endianness, which means which way around the bytes are facing. It sets the location to zero so you know that you're reading from the start. And then it reads the version. If the version is zero, it does this, otherwise it throws an error. Because you want to do this, you don't want to have it just silently do nothing. Because this is way more informative and you might screw something up in the future and then you don't know what you did, because you just get random errors. It reads the width and the height, and then it makes a new map and reads the heights into the map. So the map just sets the width and the height. And the read heights version 0, because we might do something differently at some point. Just reads every byte, divides it by 2, and that's the height of the tile. So that should theoretically work. I mean, we can give it a bash. Well, the server starts anyway. This is so annoying because I'm sharing this project. I might have to do like a client project and a, another project because that's that's really annoying. We have a problem! I don't know what problem we have. I want to read by 24 of 24. Why am I doing that? That's, that's stupid. I don't know why this is happening. Yeah, so that was a bug in my framework. Never mind that then. I fixed it. It's all good. So let's try this again. Let's run the climb. So let's move the climb. And you can see that the camera is now in fact in a different place. Oh my god, it's like amazing. Now we need to draw the map. So let's do that quickly. Also, do nothing lol smiley face. This is what comments are used for in my code. So we don't want any of this. And we probably want like sort by texture, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually really. Eh, whatever. So if map is not nil or null, people have still not expressed a preference for which I should call it, then yeah, let's just do a simple for loop. So for basically every tile in the map. Did I do that right? I completely switched those around. I always do that. It's a bit of a bit of a problem, really, honestly. So the blocks are one high. So we want to render. At x map stop y. So if a block is at zero, that means the height is at zero, so the block needs to be at minus one. Yes, okay. So that's why we want to render it. Let's just do this nice and tidily. Oh, we don't have a z. Of course we don't have a z, because that's the y, because that's not confusing at all. Let's, um,. Let's just change that. Okay, that's much more better. Um, and then we want 
to have any tile because we don't have that information in the map yet. And then just use white, which is the default colour. Okay, I really hope that works. That would be cool. It did work. Except I don't have a dude anymore because I deleted that. Okay, we can fix that by not doing that. I think it's tiles 11. So we want to render this at the position tiles 11 color dot white. Is that the right thing? Let's see if that's the right thing. That is not the right thing. That's a block. Which is not what we want to do. So I told the client that it's at positions x3 z2. Is it, is it at X? Hmm. It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? So zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two. Yes, yes, this is completely correct. We have sent a map over the network and we have positioned our dude in it, although now I'm moving the dude, but that's only client side. The server doesn't doesn't know what the hell is happening over there. But you know, we finally got something on screen, and that's that's pretty good, I'd say. I'm pretty pleased. Are you pretty pleased? I'm pretty pleased. Um, that's uh, about it for today. Although I do want to do something else before we go, just to play around. Let's just be like map zero zero. That's one. And map one zero is one point five. Map zero. No, that's not really what I wanted. But thank you all the same, Visual Studio. So we've just set a few tiles to be different, just to see if that would actually work. Damned, it does. It it looks a bit queer, but it's uh. It's interesting. So this one is like floating in the air. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's basically it for the day. I I do hope that you've enjoyed this episode, especially since now we have stuff on the screen. We're like building a world. Okay, it's not much of a world. It's dirt and an inanimate, floaty, naked, hairless person. But it's a world, and it's. It's, we're doing it! We're doing it, people! Isn't this exciting? Okay. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye